Hi. Today we're going to look at the theory of optimum currency areas. This theory analyzes the question, when should a country adopt the currency, the money of another country, or when should two or more countries adopt a common currency? Here's a picture of some Ecuadorian money. Prior to the year 2000, the Ecuadorians used the sucre. After the year 2000, they used the dollar. As you might imagine, this was a controversial switch in Ecuador. Why should Ecuadorians have a picture of George Washington on their currency instead of a picture of El Roy Afaro, a famous Ecuadorian president? Can you guess why they switched? It has something to do with the fact that this is a 50,000 sucre note. Here's a picture of the annual inflation rate in Ecuador. As you can see, prior to the year 2000, the inflation rate was high and very variable. It might be 50% one year, drop down to 25% a few years later, back up to 70%, and so forth. It's very difficult to plan long term with such a high and variable inflation rate. Very difficult to have a 30-year mortgage, for example. That, remember that 50,000 Sucre note I showed you a few minutes ago? That was worth about $2 in the year 2000. So what was going on? Well, basically, the Ecuadorian government's finances were out of control, and the Ecuadorian central bank was simply printing too much money, generating this high inflation rate. In the year 2000, the government decided to switch over to dollars. And as you can see, immediately the inflation rate fell. The Ecuadorian inflation rate is now about the same as the U.S. inflation rate, because they share the same money. Moreover, the inflation rate in Ecuador is no longer controlled by the Ecuadorian Central Bank. It's controlled by the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank. The Federal Reserve may be a controversial institution in the United States, and many people are highly critical of it. But on a world scale, the U.S. Federal Reserve is a very high-quality institution. It's an independent institution, independent of politics, and it has managed to keep a low inflation rate by world standards. So it's a big improvement over the Ecuadorian central bank. So one of the benefits of using the currency of another country is that if you choose a country with a better central bank, you're going to get a lower and more stable inflation rate. And that makes your own country's economy work better. Generally speaking, inflation is not a good thing. And in particular, high and unstable inflation rates make planning long term more difficult. Notice that adopting another country's currency is a particularly strong commitment device. If you just told people, well, from now on, we promise not to print up too many sucre, people not, but might not believe you. If, however, you adopt the dollar, they know that you are no longer in control of printing up dollars. It's a much more believable promise. And in particular, it's more believable since it's harder to reverse course. It's like burning your bridges, or like Ulysses tying himself to the mask. Adopting the currency of another country is a very strong commitment device. Closely related to this is that when you adopt another country's currency, you're going to get lower interest rates. One of the reasons people might not want to lend money to a country like Ecuador is that they fear that when the payments come due, the Ecuadorian central bank might just print up a lot of surca and pay back the lenders in a debased currency, in a currency which is no longer worth as much as when the lending was made. On the other hand, if you lend dollars to Ecuador, you know that the Ecuadorian central bank cannot print up more dollars in order to pay you back. So lenders will be more willing to lend you money at a lower interest rate. We can see exactly this uh, happening uh, with the uh, introduction of the euro in Europe. Let's take a look. Here are interest rates on 10-year government bonds. In particular, the yellow is uh, Greece and the red is Germany. Here up here is uh, Portugal and Ireland. Now this is when the euro was first being discussed. And as you can see at that time, it was much more expensive for Greece to borrow than it was for Germany to borrow. People were worried that Greece would print up drachmas. With the introduction of the euro, interest rates everywhere were coming down, but more particularly notice that interest rates were converging. So after the introduction of the euro by the 2000s, 
Greece could borrow about as cheaply as could Germany, and the same for Portugal and Ireland. So in the glory years, the euro seemed to be working very well, Greece was able to borrow very cheaply. What we've seen with the euro crisis is that these interest rates have once again diverged as people are worried that Greece might exit the euro and pay back its lenders in the new drachma instead of in euros. Another benefit of using a common currency is increased trade with your currency partners. The reason for this is that when you have two currencies, there are some transactions cost with trading one currency for the other. In addition, it's more difficult to compare your prices and your cost when your prices are in one currency and your costs are in another currency. And when you have to deal over time, you're going to be more worried about foreign exchange risk. So for these reasons, adopting a common currency can increase trade among the currency partners. And that can be particularly important for a small country such as Ecuador. OK, what about the costs? Well, the main cost of having a common currency is the flip side to not having your own central bank is you can't have an independent monetary policy. And without an independent monetary policy and an independent currency, you're going to have a reduced ability to respond to some types of shocks. Let's show that in a little bit more detail. Let's start by looking at a shock when two countries use the same currency. So suppose that uh, Ecuador sells bananas to the United States and in return they import small tools. And let's suppose that a bunch of bananas costs a dollar and at that price wages in Ecuador are five dollars per hour. Now suppose that another country starts to produce bananas competing with Ecuador. Or suppose that in the United States people decide they don't like bananas anymore. Well, for whatever reason, let's imagine that the world price of bananas falls from $1 a bunch to $0.80 cents a bunch. It's clear that wages in Ecuador can no longer be as high. Indeed, with a 20% fall in the price of bananas, what has to happen in order to keep everybody employed in Ecuador is that wages have to fall by the same amount, uh, same proportional amount to $4 per hour. This is called internal devaluation or internal depreciation. That works just fine if wages and the price of bananas respond equally quickly. The problem happens when the price of bananas falls really quickly, but wages take a much longer time to fall. No one likes it when their wages fall. As a result, there can be labor unrest. There can be strikes. There may be a lot of unemployment in the time it takes for wages to fall from $5 an hour to $4 an hour. That's an uncomfortable process. No country likes to go through that process. Now let's look at the adjustment process to exactly the same shock, but we'll assume to begin with that we have two currencies. And let's begin where $1 is equal to one Ecuadorian sucre. As a result, one bunch of bananas uh, has a price of one sucre or a price of $1 in the United States. Wages are five sucre per hour in Ecuador. So everything is exactly the same as before. We'll also assume that people in the United States, for whatever reason, decide they don't want so many bananas or they don't want so many Ecuadorian bananas. As a result of this, the demand for Ecuadorian currency falls. The reason people in the United States wanted to buy Ecuadorian currency, the sucre, is because they wanted to use that currency to buy bananas. Now that they want fewer bananas, they're less willing to pay for sucre. So as a result, instead of being willing to pay $1 to get one sucre, people in the United States are now only willing to pay $0.80 cents to get one sucre because they don't want as many bananas as they did before. As a result of this, the price of bananas is now 80 cents in the United States. The other difference from what we had before is that imports into Ecuador are now more expensive. What Ecuadorians used to be able to buy for one sucre, now that the value of the sucre has fallen, it's now going to cost them 1.25 sucre. Wages in Ecuador, however, are still five sucre per hour, but notice that those wages now buy fewer goods. In fact, 
real wages in this adjustment process, the external devaluation or external depreciation process, have fallen just as much as they did before. It's equivalent to the fall in wages from $5 an hour to $4 per hour. But we've done it, instead of wages falling, we've done it with prices increasing. Now you might say, well, why should this external depreciation process be any better since in reality we end up exactly the same place as we did before? And that is an excellent question. The reason this is better is psychological or institutional. When your employer tries to cut your wages, you may complain. You may go on strike. You may be upset. On the other hand, if your employer keeps your wages at 5 sucre per hour, but prices go up to 1.25 sucre, you're not as likely to blame your employer. You're not as likely to go on strike when prices go up as when wages go down. Even though, in reality, these lead to the same equivalent buying power, people get much more upset when wages go down than they do when prices go up. As a result, the external depreciation process is less likely to create unemployment in Ecuador, and that's better off for Ecuador. So summing up, the benefits of a single currency is you get lower, more stable inflation rate, lower interest rates, increased trade. The costs, no independent monetary policy, means that you have a lesser ability to respond to shocks. In the next lecture, we'll apply this, these ideas, this model, to the euro. Thanks.